Political parties that will be on the ballot in next year's general election are currently carrying out critical house cleaning as they await the umpire's whistle for the commencement of the grand campaigns leading up to those elections. The Accord Party is one of them and only recently nominated philanthropist Professor Christopher Imumolen as its presidential candidate. He joins us now to have a conversation. Glad to have you with us on Newsday, Professor. And congratulations on your nomination for the yeah. Accord Party. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. Now, I'd like to ask you about a self-assessment. What do you think your chances are of becoming president in the face of the presidential candidates that have, um, been, that have emerged from the APC, PDP, and Labour Party recently? Um, you know, um, this is the only time a new face can emerge as president in Nigeria. We have a clear opportunity. Nigeria is faced with reality of hardship. We can see what is happening currently with security, education. You know, Nigerians, um, even before now, have said it, that we truly need a new face to emerge and lead this country to its destination. Um, I bring that hope. I, I'm coming in at a time where Nigeria needs it the most. And um, I believe I have a clear chance to win in and clinch in. Um, the presidency, it's all about strategy. For me, the 2023 election will be hinged more on the kind of strategy we'll be putting in. As a young Nigerian, I'm 39, and I represent the youth, the true youth of Nigeria. And um, by his grace, I am from a party that also has structure all across Nigeria. Accord Party is one of the oldest parties in Nigeria. Yes, has not produced a president before, but we, we are building up. We have eight months to election, and we understand that we have 176,000 polling units, and we know what to do to fill in our voters. What are you going to do? Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, Christopher, uh, you, know, you said quite a lot there, but you, uh, you said that you have a mission to change the narrative of the governance uh, in Nigeria. Uh, what are you bringing to the table? Why should Nigerians trust you? Okay, in my antecedent, I am the only Nigerian who has given 500,000 Nigerian scholarship. All my school is on scholarship. We've been doing that for the past 15 years. I, you can check that. I'm the only Nigerian whose name is on the World Book of Greatness in the UK because I personally empowered 4,000 Nigeria with business grants. I've been doing this without asking Nigeria for anything. I do it out of passion, out of the need to rescue Nigeria, out of the current hardship we find ourselves. If I become the president of Nigeria, I'm going to do more because I see politics as an opportunity to give back more to the people. At some point, at some point you're not personally to enrich yourself, but to be able to touch more life. Nigeria need hope. They need to be touched. We need to be currently out of the political, actually, no, the economic hardship we've currently find ourselves. I will do that. I'm going to go back to what your, your response to um, what your response was to my first question when you mentioned strategy and you know what to do. I felt like you were poking the bear but didn't hit the nail on the head. We've seen or we've heard about collaborative effort that might be made by the likes of um, P um, Labour Party's Peter B and New Nigeria People's Party's Rabiu Kwankwaso to ensure that they you know, beat the ruling party at the polls. So can you give us more insight on your political strategy to win? Because I think you have a lot to say even though okay, you're... Okay. Yeah, strategy is still strategy when it's secret. But when we let it out, it's no more strategy. But I'm going to give you this. Watch out, my declaration. I had over 12,000 people on that ground. They were not bought crowd. On the primaries, we used the old field playground in Abuja. It was filled up to brim. Nigerians should not underrate anyone in this particular election. We are looking at a lot of things. We've been doing a lot of things. We have built this structure silently. And this place is not about noise on social media. It's not about people going out to cast their vote. And there are so many things we'll be doing. Coming, in coming months, we begin to see build up. And let me say this, that this is going to become the longest campaign ever since 1999. Usually we have three months after primaries to, to election. Now we're having about nine months. To me, I regard this election as a marathon election. Slow and steady would win the race. Indeed, Christopher. Now, why are you pitching your tent uh, with the Accord Party? And uh, realistically, I have to say this, it's uh, only, or at least most of the time, 
when it's election season that we hear about other political parties, a court party and the other ones, apart from APC and, um, you know, and uh, PDP. So why is there a court party? Is it that it's easier for you to realize your ambition on that platform? You could have gone elsewhere. So give us an insight on that. Okay, quick, let me say this. You know, you would not hear about other political parties if they don't have persons representing them in the federal council, especially, especially as presidents. So you would only hear about PDP and APC because, of course, we know those two parties have, they have strength in terms of the number of um, um, persons they have in the political offices. Then number two, I chose a court party because I needed a party who believed that they can win an election. We have so many parties, but frankly speaking, some parties may not because of their body language and how they treat members of their party. Accord is one party that really would have cases out there. There are parties that is very harmonized party and it's quiet. A lot of things is happening in Accord. And again, it's not easy. You know, we have 18 political parties. Unlike before that, we have a seven something political parties. Mm -hmm. For anyone to emerge as a presidential candidate this time, it's not an easy tax, I'm telling you. So it's not as if it, is, it was easier for, for, um, for, for us, but because I saw the party as a party who believed they could win an election. If I, can, if I believe I will win the election, I also need a platform that believes. If I believe and the platform does not believe, I'm not going to have a realistic dream. Um, in terms of opposition, your party hasn't been too active in that uh, regard as well. You know, realistically, if we yeah. take a look at what's happening, why is that? Because you would expect, when you do a critique on the incumbent's, uh, you know, achievements or lack of it or challenges as it were, that is where you build on. That is the case you put forward uh, for Nigerians to, you know, decide on what to do, mm. on who to vote for. Yeah. But that hasn't happened. You know, um, largely, uh, we know Nigeria politics involve a lot of logistics. To retain and sustain momentum and structure requires so much funding. And you, sh you, sh you will know, just two parties have been able to sustain momentum even after election because they have funding. They have people who could, bank who could support them. Let me use that word. But every other party now depends on the individual that is coming on board to push it. That is what we are going to be doing henceforth. A court party have the dream. I remember Nigeria have been clamoring for a new face, a new, yes, I don't want, I, but for me, I want to engage in positive campaign. I'm not going to come on board and start calling names and say no. Or I want to look at these problems and how do we solve the problem. That is what we want to put on the table. We want, we'll be engaging Nigerians, believe me, and in the next eight months, it's going to become a very fruitful um, outing for us. Give us a, an outline of your ma political manifesto. Yeah, we, we will be looking at security, of course. Security is key. No, no nation can strive without peace, without national integration. Nigeria has never been this divided as it is today. We need national integration. We'll be looking at power, electricity. We'll be looking at food security. We'll be looking at education. Look, I'm, an, I'm a professor, and I have three universities at my age. At nine years old, won three university. It shows that I've been personally, I've, I've done something good as an African. Looking at the economic hardship we have, and you could strive to that level. I'm the only one who have done that in Africa, and I understand that. That is why even while students are on strike, I already opened a portal for all Nigerian students to go online and study with my school for free, hundred percent. That can accommodate over 18 million students. I'm demonstrating solutions to problems. I'm, I'm not only giving promises. I'm already solving problems. So education is going to be one of my key areas. I've been doing that before now, mm. and I'm going to do more. You know, we have a lot of digitalization of, eco of our economy. Um, because when you digitalize an economy, you have been able to fight corruption by 50%. Then we look at the ju judicial system. We strengthen it. There's a whole lot of things we'll be touching from employment down to empowerment, down to welfare, and converting Nigeria from a, from a consumptive economy into a productive economy. That can only happen when we strengthen our capacity, human capacity, reform our educational system, and ensure all abandoned projects. Do you know we have about 4,000 abandoned projects, more than Ajakuta steel, refinery not working? We need to start revamping all these things so that Nigeria can have their work, their hands back. A lot of things we'll be doing. Very good, uh, Christopher. Now, how would you rate the issue of delegate voting? We saw what happened uh, with the major parties and the concept of money politics. I know you said uh, a court... Uh, is uh, not into it all, but uh, our electorate is presented with the best candidates vying for public office at the end of the day. What, based on what we, we saw? You know, it's, um, it's saddened. And um, if we must be realistic to ourselves, um, using delegates, even from our, for our president said so in one of his speech, that how do you select delegates and 
delegates who have been monetized, who have been bought, punches have been bought, then what will it tell about the real election? You know, we already have a foundational issue now. Nigerians have already, have already seen that people must pay. They've shown that TV, that vision to Nigeria that you pay to get somebody voted. We just want to see how we can really change the mindset of Nigeria to now beginning not to believe in that again. It's wrong that... So I, I think INEC should seriously look at that and uh, look at how to allow parties to be independent about how they choose people that represent them. If I was the one, look at what is happening in China, a system called meritocracy, where you, you, you select before you elect. You interview every, every person who want to come in to know what they've done in, in, their, in their past, what are the antecedents, not about the money they have, not about it. So in that way, you can be able to select the right leaders to lead Nigeria into prosperity. But are Nigerians themselves ready to change? It's a two-way thing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it, that is part of the issue now. Nigerians are not ready to change. Why? Because of hardship, because of the system. You know, when you are used to a particular system, you know, people, do you know, let me, let me give an example. To, let me use um, um, WhatsApp and um, Telegram. You know, tele, I'm not, sorry, I'm not trying to, I'm not promoting any market. I'm just trying to use that. <laughs> All right. example, please. Um, Nigerians are used to WhatsApp. Ask them to go to Telegram. In Nigeria, Telegram has more function. They just have this, this um, WhatsApp. Why do we go there? It took federal government deliberate effort to force Nigerians to start using gas. You know, everybody thought kerosene. So people even said, oh, food you cook with gas is not as delicious as that you cook with <laughs> kerosene. The federal government has deliberately increased the price of kerosene to force Nigerians to start using gas. When we are used to a particular system, it takes a whole lot to change the mindset of that is one of the biggest work we'll be doing. Mind, mind reform, the revolution of the mind, to make Nigeria believe that let's select the right leader. The 5,000 naira you collect today does not worth the five years of suffering. You know, that is a whole lot of work. That is a whole lot of education. It comes down to, and I, I'm, I'm very happy with every other candidate that is out there. It's not just a work for me alone. It's a work for other candidates from every other party that believe in the true Nigeria. So if all of us engage in this, then at the end of the day, let's see who Nigerians will choose. Um, thank you for the insight. Um, of course, we, we, we know your profile and how much you've you know, given back, as it were. But I'd like to ask at this point, in the event, in the event that you don't become Nigeria's next president, what's next for you? Okay, I, I'm very sure that I'll become Nigeria president first. <laughs> but, but, I like but, your but, optimism. Yes, yeah, I'm very sure. I'm very certain of that. Okay. Yeah, it might not be, but I'm sure. Yeah. So, I, 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 I have, I'm, I'm a successful businessman. I am so happy doing what I'm, I'm doing. I've been empowering Nigerians, not just Nigeria, black race. I have a school in Ghana, in Togo, in Syria alone, in Kenya. I have, I'm the president of the Global Wealth System, where we train business persons and make them millionaires. I've been doing that for many years, all over Nigeria. I'm the president of Unique Foundation. It's the largest NGO in Nigeria. It has over 6 million membership. I've been doing this. It's my joy seeing that people have been empowered. And even becoming a president, wanting to run for presidency in Nigeria, has also limited some of the empowerment activities I have in other Af African countries. So I have a lot of things in my hand. I already have a community of about 7 million people that look up to me, that I support. 7 million is up to some states, it's up to some country. So I'm already controlling some, some things in my own little capacity. So I have a whole lot of things to go back to do. If um, paraventure what you say will happen, which of course would not happen. Uh, I guess maybe we we'll <laughs> also have to rely <laughs> on the... Seven million translating them to yeah, votes. Well. As it were. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll be speaking with uh, Professor Christopher E. Mumole. He is a uh, presidential aspirant uh, for the, or candidate rather, yes. for the Accord Party. Uh, we wish you all the best. Yeah.